Hi everyone, my name is Sabrina Sanchez and this is my YouTube channel. So today, I am really excited because I just got a box in the mail that I've been expecting for a while and it is my one kin little Dominican readers box that has books from different Dominican authors so this was given to me as a gift um, my birthday was in October and I just got it these were on sale for pre-order they were $50 and there were I think three different options I think one of them was for younger readers where they give you four children's books one of them was YA and the other was just kind of like a mix of both so each box is supposed to contain four books I don't know what books they are I haven't opened this before um, and so I will be unboxing it now so let's see so actually before I even begin to unbox anything I just want to say this is really special to me um, as you can see behind me this is my bookshelf I have tons of books I am an avid reader I'm Dominican American I live in the Bronx I just I am so ecstatic when I heard that Dominican Writers was doing this in collaboration with One Kin. My whole life I've been searching for, you know, Dominican authors and Dominican literature that represented me. I think that this is an amazing collaboration that they're doing and I'm so glad that kids out there are receiving these books. I wish that I had these books when I was a kid and so I'm just, I'm just super excited. Especially because like they already did the research for you. like. They basically just found all these authors, got them together, found the titles, and just kind of like made a list and compiled some of the best books out there for you. And I think that that's so important because a lot of times, you know, especially people of color, we have to go out of our way to find products that are for us or meant for us. And I just want to say that obviously, this is by no means just for Dominican people. Whoever wants these kinds of books, get them. This, I believe, is a YA um, box because, like I said, it was a gift from my cousin for my birthday. But honestly, if I really like these, I'm going to um, order more boxes. They are available for Christmas. If you want to give them to kids, if you want to gift them to people, I think people would really appreciate this. Me, personally, I'm starting to slowly build my separate collection of Dominican authors and so I'm super excited about this. Alright, so let's get started. So obviously this is the front of the box. It says One Kin and it says a retail experience curated by culture. One Kin is actually a brand that pretty much finds people of color's businesses, so black and brown businesses, and kind of like advertise things for them, puts them all on a website where people can find them easily. And it ranges from you know, obviously this to beauty products and clothing products and skincare and hair products, whatever you want. Um, but the whole point is to kind of curate a place where black and brown people can buy from black and brown businesses. I think that is such an amazing concept and it's something that I can't believe no one has ever thought of before. So I'm glad that they did it. All right. So let's see. Ooh, okay. So here's the inside of the box. Let's see if you guys can see. So it says, join hashtag gift BLK and BRN movement. Unbox your gifts and stories with the community and tag at underscore one kin. Okay, I love it. So in here we have a little note. It says, que lo que? I don't know if you guys can see that. Que lo que, little Dominican reader, we are so happy to share some of our favorite books with you. We carefully selected each one and hope they become your favorites too. Why is this box special? Because there are stories told for us and by us Dominicans. In each box, you will find stories you can relate to and characters that look and sound just like you because you matter. Share your story and your books using hashtag little Dominican readers and tag at underscore one kin and at Dominican writers. And then, I believe this is a bookmark. This is so beautiful. I love it. Honestly, when I try to do like a pineapple, that's like how my hair looks. And she's reading Dominicana. So that is so dope. Oh my gosh, and she has the crackers and the coffee. That's literally me, like on a day-to-day -day basis. I am a very, very, very invested coffee drinker. And if you guys comment below, let me know what coffee you like. 
trying new coffee, so. And then we have like some hay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not mad at it. Feels very tropical, whatever. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. These are some of the books already in the box. So now I'm just going to take them out and we're going to look at them. Okay. So let me just show these first. And then I'm going to go one by one and talk about these. And then I have these two. And it comes with a button, Dominican Writers. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about these. So I just want to start by saying I've been following Dominican Writers for some time now. Um, I want to say that I followed them about a year and a half, two years ago perhaps. Um, I found them because I was just literally searching for stuff like this. So as I mentioned, I am an avid reader. I also love to write. Um, and I had been kind of just exploring my creative writing, exploring endeavors like that. And I was like, you know, there has to be a community for me because the stories that I want to write are not your typical stories, right? I mean, we're used to reading, you know, predominantly white um, characters in suburban neighborhoods and they deal with those types of issues but you know there's there's obviously i don't have to say socioeconomic disparity with the latino community and you know some issues that we have to deal with that other people may not necessarily relate to immigration you know um, assimilation coming into a new country having parents that have the old way of thinking oh god don't get me started on that but the point is that um you know, I had been kind of searching for a community like this. So I came across Dominican writers. Um, I have participated in some of their workshops. I follow their every move, honestly. I have their post notifications on. And um, by the way, I'm going to tag that in the description. I created a bookstagram during quarantine because of COVID. And as I really just kind of dove into that. And that's how I discovered the whole One Kin Little Dominican Readers box. And I think one can actually tagged me. I made a comment from my bookstagram, which I'm going to put also in the description and tag here. But I think I made a comment and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm crying. Like this is so amazing. I wish I had these books as kids. And they reposted it and tagged me. So I thought that was really cool. So I've been following them for a while. And um, yeah, I thought that this was so amazing. And, and thank, thanks to Dominican writers, they're were more opportunities for me to find books that I wanted to read, frankly. And so on their website, I thought it was fantastic. You guys should check that out. Basically, they have, you know, tips for writers, tips for publishers, um, tips for readers. They have like all the books ever by Dominican authors also linked there that you can get through bookshop or through, you know, any retail stores that sell those titles. And so, you know, they had all this information in one place, DominicanWriters.com. And I was like, whoa. So yeah, that's how I found out about this. I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about that, but you should check it out. Okay, so now let's see what titles I got. So let's start with in the Time of the Butterflies. So I've heard about this book before. I think I have an old copy, like, you know, one of the old covers here in my bookshelf. Truth is, it's in Spanish. This one's in English. For those of you that don't know, this is obviously based on the dictatorship of Rafael Trujillo, which um, lasted a very long time. That regime ended in the 1960s. These three sisters are real sisters. Um, they were obviously opponents of Trujillo and they did a lot of things to try and combat that dictatorship. I started doing research, I found a book and I got it in Spanish. Someone, well actually someone gave it to me. But this is awesome because while I do read Spanish, now this is in English and more people can learn about this history which is so important. So um, yeah, it's published by Algonquin Books. So awesome. I have three copies of this book with this one. I was gifted a hardcover copy um, just because. And then I got another one for my birthday. And then I now have this one. Now, I am not mad about it. 
this is an amazing book it is written in poetry style so i'm just gonna flip through some of the pages here the author is um elizabeth acevedo and it is a story it reads like a novel but it's written in poetry and i think that is so beautiful this book is really special because it is the first time that I've ever seen a novel written as poetry. And I think that it's so awesome. I'm personally a huge poetry lover. And it kind of blends the two things that I really love, which is a good story and also poetry. I think it's also amazing because it just represents me. Like, I just, I just love this book. Um, yeah, it's published by Harper Team, Harper Collins. And um, if you guys have not checked out Elizabeth Acevedo, I believe this is her third book. I'm not quite sure. I know that there's um, also Clap When You Land, which I also have a copy of. And there's also With the Fire on High, I believe it's called. Those books are also awesome. A lot about, you know, womanhood, sexuality, Dominican culture, the diaspora, reconciling relationships between older generations and newer generations, opening your mind to the possibilities. Um, Dominican American identity, right? Um, you know, people ask you where you're from and our first usually inclination is to say, I'm Dominican, but I'm an American. You know, I'm whether you became a citizen after you arrived to the United States or you were born here like I was, I'm an American too. So it has a lot of those elements and I these these are just awesome. So I love this. So the next one. So this is Halsey Street. Halsey Street. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's by Naima Coster. And let's see, what does it say? So it says, when everything has changed, an artist must find her way home. A modern day story of family loss and renewal. Halsey Street captures the deeply human need to belong, not only to a place, but to one another. Penelope Grant has, scraped, has scrapped her failed career as an artist in Pittsburgh and moved back to Brooklyn to keep an eye on her ailing father. She's accepted that her future won't be what she'd dream, but now, as gentrification has completely reshaped her old neighborhood, even her past is unrecognizable. Old haunts have been raised, and wealthy white strangers have replaced every familiar face in bed -Stuy. Even her mother, Mirela, has abandoned the family to reclaim her roots in the Dominican Republic. That took courage. It's also unforgivable. When Penelope moves into the attic apartment of the affluent Harpers, she thinks she's found a semblance of family and maybe even love. But her world is upended again when she receives a postcard from Mirela asking for reconciliation. As old wounds are reopened and secrets revealed, a journey across an ocean of sacrifice and self-discovery begins. An engrossing debut, Halsey Street shifts between the perspectives of these two captivating troubled women. Mirela has one last chance to win back the heart of the daughter she'd lost long before leaving New York. And for Penelope, it's time to break free of the hold of the past and start navigating her own life. This makes me excited because um, I feel as though a lot of times, and this was an issue during the Harlem Renaissance about art as propaganda, literature as propaganda. Um, Harlem Renaissance artists often face the issue of writing for multiple audiences, white audiences and black audiences. Black people um, thought that it should be written to promote black culture and basically to uplift black people, change the perspective that is had of them. Whereas white people were into the exoticism and the stereotypes that, you know, black people were said to have and um you know there was differences there as to how a book should be written this makes me excited because while it does touch upon some of those racial themes at least from the synopsis right i haven't read this book um while it sounds like it does touch upon some racial themes and some eth ethnic themes i think that it also just is a real story Again, I haven't read this book. I am excited to read it, but it sounds like it's just a real story of everyday people. And that is something that sometimes we need to see. Sometimes we just want to see our day-to-day -day lives, which is something that, you know, normal literature, white literature gets a lot. So, super excited for this. And then finally, this. So this is Malcriada and Other Stories, Lorraine Avila, or Avila. 
there's no accent so I can't tell how to pronounce it. Um, so it says, in the middle of the Caribbean Sea, aboard an illegal voyage from the Dominican Republic to Puerto Rico, a 12-year-old learns her name, a formal cacao family finds a con constellation of his lover's thighs, best friends become strangers and find the essence of themselves in the face of deception, an old man exchanges his homeland for a New York City bodega storefront, preteen boys grapple with authority, female cousins come to terms with their first shared sexual experience, an alcoholic woman finds serenity at the bottom of the sea. Feminism is deconstructed by opposing views. On the back of a motorcycle, self-awareness is found, and a woman discovers that healing is a series of choices. And then it has, you know, some reviews and some criticisms. Um, and this was actually published by the Dominican Writers Association, so DWA Press, which is so cool that they have their own publishing um, company firm. There is some illustration on the inside, which I've seen from previous photos. So there's artwork, which is super dope. There's another illustration. So this is super exciting, super awesome. I'm really happy about this. All right, so those are the books. So one more time, I'm just gonna show you guys what I received. Take a screenshot, tag me in it. So yeah, if you like this, Get your own one kin box. They're still on sale. I'm not sure for how long, but I know that they're definitely going to be on sale through the holidays. Um, if you want to gift it to somebody, it's a great, great gift. This, because it was pre-ordered, I didn't receive it on my birthday. I just received it, and I am so happy. I'm going to um, text my cousin. I'm going to thank her so much, show her the books that um, I got and this is just the first of many right I do have some other Dominican books and I'd be happy to share that with you guys I also can do other videos of other books but whatever you guys want to see let me know and I will try to do that video so thank you guys so much for watching this video this box is awesome so I think it's worth a montage <laughs>